Hey guys, today I'm bringing you a video on how to be instantly faster on F1 2019. Once again, this isn't about iRacing or real life setups and all that sort of stuff. This is how to be quick on F1 2019, so let's jump straight into it. Uh, one big thing I noticed straight away, this made me gain half a second, and I haven't seen any other videos on YouTube about it. Maybe it's a little bit of a niche problem, but for me, it was certainly costing me half a second a lap, and I was wondering what on earth has gone wrong since F1 2018. Uh, since I've gotten on to F1 2019 and being so much slower than everybody else like my friends that I normally race against and uh, I had no idea what was going wrong. I tried everything in the setups, like everything imaginable, trying to change front wing, rear wing, uh, roll bars, like I've tried everything and I just could not get it any faster even though I spent hours on the setup and I was just a lot slower than people that I was close to in pace in previous games and uh, I just wanted to make sure that you're all aware of it uh, especially just the controller users for this tip and trick in particular and uh, let's get into it so I just set a basic lap around Italy I only did one lap and I'm ranked uh, 214th uh, nothing special so what I want to show in particular because why I've chose Italy in particular uh, is because we have a problem with the controller um, I'm not particularly aggressive with my controller I don't mash buttons and stuff but my controller is a couple of years old now here's the interesting thing majority of the population I'd say playing F1 2019 would be using the controller like I have a controller and a wheel I use the wheel less often but for competitive play I use the controller and what I want to get into detail about is this little problem that I discovered thanks to a friend named Kremer who actually spectated me watching a race uh, and noticed that I wasn't using full throttle even though I was squeezing the trigger all the way down I was not using full throttle and you'll see that right now I'm doing this live commentary uh, I'm squeezing the throttle full ball right now and it's only going to 97% I'll try again 97 96 96 again like you get the idea a lot of the time it doesn't even go that high so 93 is the average when I'm not actually trying to focus on squeezing the trigger that hard so basically all the times I've been needing to open the throttle full ball it has only been going to say 93 94 percent and uh, that is a huge amount of time lost uh, from any track really but in particular I wanted to see what the time loss in Italy was I only just did one lap in Italy so let's go see I've turned the throttle saturation down which is a quick fix although you might want to you might want to actually buy a new controller eventually uh, to fix the problem as well because it will affect the sensitivity of your throttle input. So I'm going to just drive along the main straight and see how much time I lose just by not being able to use the full throttle like I was on my one lap. So as you can see, I lost about a tenth of a second there. Um, that's just one straight. How much of Monza is on full throttle? Basically, majority of it. So you can imagine how much time I'd be losing from there. I know it, uh, Germany was the first track that I actually tested, and I ended up losing half a second. So that's half a second a lap, and then you got race where it compounds the issue by not being able to charge the battery, by not being able to brake as hard because you're traveling slower heading into a braking zone, you're not charging the battery and therefore you become even slower in a race because you're not charging the battery. So it is really vital that you check you don't have the same problem as me and uh, you make sure that you are reaching 100% throttle uh, input by... I raised it to like 4 or 5 clicks, uh, that's all you need but it will affect uh, the throttle sensitivity as you come out of corners as well. So hopefully, if you have that problem, it's helped. It, ga it helped me gain so much time. But uh, next up, we're going to actually talk about setups which can benefit everybody, unless you're already an expert. I'm not an expert myself, but I'd like to think that I can help a lot of people that might not know as much about setups. Uh, I might be wrong about a few things, but this is honestly what's given me the most pace I've ever had and uh, I'd like to try and help as many people out there as I can. So, after I discovered uh, that fix for the controller, the throttle input, 
Um, I spent a couple of hours trying to grind out a lap in Brazil, uh, and I was instantly like really up there. Like I was well down the order, probably like 500th or something, um, without the fix. And then after I spent a few hours practicing and developing my own setup, I, got, I became ranked 44th. It's now dropped to 57th at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to talk about uh, how to set up the car properly and uh, what you can do to change various problems and uh, make the car handle better, tailored to your needs. Because I'd never use the world record setup when actually setting my best time uh, in time trial itself or even the race. To show you that, I'm going to show you the world record setup used on the PS4. Uh, which is... 5-5, five, five. You, you get the idea. So this is the setup, and my setup that I used personally to get my fastest time was 3-6 and you know various other changes. So that's what I used tailored to my specific needs of my driving style and I'm going to talk about now uh, what each thing you can do and what you can change to try and get the most out of the car for yourself. So typically the setups this year have been higher rear wing and lower front wing similar to last year but we do not have the ballast anymore which makes it a totally different uh, box of frogs in terms of setting up the car but uh, I noticed that majority of people use low on throttle and off throttle transmission anyways so uh, it's pretty much standard what I notice is if you're coming into a braking zone, like you can interchange this with your braking balance and uh, pressure. When you're coming into a braking zone, this is how much the car pretty much rotates when you're braking. Well, that's what I found at least. Um, so you could run this higher if you want less rotation while trying to like go around a hairpin, for example, and you're not on the throttle at that point in time. Uh, I notice that the car can become unstable if you go absolutely no uh, like unlocked uh, transmission for the on off throttle adjustment so you have to mess around with that usually 65% is what I'm most comfortable with so it stops the car rotating as much but you can still you know rotate the car in time for the corner and get a nice exit um, onto a straight like in Canada for example but in the wet I usually run something a lot higher than that uh, so I'm guessing that if you did run lower you could also uh, just reduce the brake pressure and the bias just to make sure that the rear is stable while you're going through a hairpin as such uh, but yeah majority of the time a lot of people just run 65 ish percent and uh, have their own sort of brakes and then that usually fixes the problem uh, majority of people use right right left left camber angles I do too because I'm not I'm not bothered to be you know finding the exact perfect camber and toe uh, I know that if you actually want to find the best setup, you're going to have to mess with these. I've seen really weird stuff like that kind of. Uh, Brendan Lee and all those esports drivers, they mess around with this once they've found the perfect setup. And it's just, uh, you have to have a lot of time to be able to find that sort of thing. And uh, yeah, it's I guess it's different for everyone as well. But if you want a basic line, like a baseline that will be really quick from the get-go, then right, right, left, left is very stable and it gives good traction out of the corners. So I'd recommend using that until you come up with a better plan or you want to invest that amount of time in finding something better. So what I've typically found is uh, having a lower suspension, obviously, to compensate for the curbing this year uh, is good for uh, keep maintaining speed going through corners that do have curbing, uh, but also by running a higher front suspension at least or rear suspension to rotate the car better front suspension in particular I found also helps me with braking a lot so by increasing the front suspension it helps me to stop the car uh, in time particularly uh, with the roll bars this year usually people go with a higher rear roll bar since they have no ballast and that's what they've kind of done to compensate for having no ballast is they have um the rear roll bar really high up to create oversteer and then what they do is they use the rear wing to compensate for that so it's still stable which typically is better if you just want something more simple and uh, there's a lot of time trial setups and a lot of tracks that actually are quite useful when using just the balance setup say, say like 3388 and uh, I don't know 344 or something like that 
and uh, that, that'll typically give you a good lap time but uh, it's up to your personal preference as to how you want to go about it and if you want more oversteer then that's the way to go and yeah it, it all affects each other so you gotta make sure you compensate for different areas of the car by um, adjusting each other set like other settings that would be affected by the balance uh, I'll talk a little bit more about roll bars if you run higher roll bars obviously that'll make it more difficult to take the curbs and that's why people would run a lower suspension for example uh, but if you are using a controller uh, usually running high roll bars is more useful as it's harder to like rotate the car in time uh, steering wheels you can go from left to right as fast as you can uh, with uh, controllers you can't is a bit of a input lag and that's why the controller is a bit slower through corners in particular such as Mo Monaco uh, the chicanes and in, in those sort of corners like Canada that's where uh, the controller loses out a lot but the traction is also pretty decent on the controller that's because we can feel it but there is actually no real improvement in traction it's just like a placebo that a lot of people get um, so for the ride height it is important not to run too low ride height. I've tried 1-2 in the past when having a social race at uh, Spa and I was wondering why I was still s slow in a straight line and that was because of the um, first issue with the controller throttle input um, I explained earlier. But it's also because if you run too low ride height then obviously you're going to be unstable when you hit some curbs but that wasn't the issue in particular. It was because by running lower ride height you're actually scraping more against the ground so that creates the problem of I don't know, more friction, more contact against the surface of the road and then that actually, actually slows you down and uh, slows down your straight line speed as well. So um, even though it gives you better uh, center of gravity, I guess, it's still important to have ground clearance, especially in the rain. So I usually run about 3.4, 3.5, 2.5, something like that. And that usually is enough to suffice uh, not scraping against the ground too much while still giving a good center of gravity and less drag down the straights because by running too high you'll also create too much drag and uh, that'll also slow you down. For the brakes, I've been running a lot lower brake pressure this, this year compared to last year I guess. Um, usually somewhere around 85, 86 and I usually keep the brake bias around 56. Um, this is to keep the rear stability, you don't want the tires to die. Uh, when you're going through hairpins and stuff, braking really hard, and uh, the tire temperature in the rears uh, can be affected greatly by the brake pressure and brake bias, depending on how much you punish them. So, if you want them to maintain intact, it's very important that you keep a very, you know, moderate brake pressure and brake bias suited to your driving style. Of course, if you're a light braker, then you might be able to increase the uh, brake pressure and put the brake bias more towards the rear but if you're a heavy breaker uh, you might want to reduce that and then that way you're able to get more out of the car and less chance of locking up. That also plays in hand like I've already explained in the past uh, with the transmission off throttle kind of. Uh, I'm kind of still understanding that myself so I won't say it's like rule of thumb or anything but uh, that's something you should experiment with too. Tire pressure is usually, for me, uh, really low in the wet, so I run basically close to nothing or a little bit um, from the left uh, for the wet, just to get the most traction out of the car. I also run a lot lower uh, tire pressures in the race too, uh, for maintaining the tire temperatures and um, tire wear for that instance. But for time trial setups, a lot of people run like full ball um, tire pressure and there's other people that run something similar to this which is somewhere in between which is where the rear tire pressure is a little bit lower than the front tire pressure which is all good uh, it just creates a bit more traction and a bit more front turning so yeah yeah that's a little bit about the setups this year I hope this has been somewhat helpful so far if you find this video helpful be sure to leave a like and subscribe I'll do more if that's what people want uh, I'm not sure if I've said anything wrong yet, if you want to try and correct me, go in the comments, criticism is welcome. But yeah, I'm just doing my best to try and help people with what I know so far from the game. Obviously it might change with future patches, I I've got no clue, so, so hopefully it stays relevant for as long as possible. So now I'm going to talk a bit about wet weather setups, um, fifth in the world apparently at Spain. Um, anyway, as usual, running a higher rear wing than front wing, I actually like understeer in the wet, 
uh, you do you still do need enough front wing to be able to turn the car though while it's raining but running basically full fully um the rear wing is just very important creating that rear traction and stability uh same thing uh you want absolutely nothing on on throttle for me that's my personal choice i like to have as much traction as i can throughout the corners if you in the dry though if you are confident that you can put down the throttle effectively uh, without spinning the rear wheels uh, you get a better potential gain by running a higher on throttle adjustment but that's totally your preference uh, for off throttle that's so I don't like spin or over rotate the car through hairpins and all that sort of stuff uh, that's why I find really useful having a fully locked off throttle uh, right right left left is just creating the most si uh, how do I describe it it's the most surface area of the tire making contact with the road as well as the rear toes just having it's just for stability for the toes and uh yeah that's just the camber angles having the most contact patch with the road it helps out with the traction a lot uh the suspension i actually so obviously you're running it pretty low in the dry but you also run it pretty low in the wet i like to to be honest i don't find much of a difference in the wet and dry setups with uh the suspension this is what i'm most comfortable with at the moment three two uh, for this track at least it's very similar for other tracks too because i tested this with germany and it was uh pretty decent there too so i find it really helpful though to have at least some suspension to help rotate the car through longer corners while you're having less aerodynamics at the front obviously uh to try and turn the car for stability reasons although if you do run high it makes it incredibly hard on the curbs to get traction if you do hit a curb so that's why it's slightly lower on the rear i run a lot lower uh roll bars i find it less helpful in the wet uh so therefore i just create um more traction going through longer corners i guess and uh, it's just softer going over curbs too if you just have uh lower roll bars and uh this is the one of the most important things is increasing the rear ride height and the front ride height that's because uh you got the water on the ground obviously and you want to clear that uh to make sure that the car still performs aerodynamically and therefore you want to raise that usually it's something like three five as i already explained but i think i had this at like seven nine and i find that six nine and seven nine is pretty pretty useful for most tracks i find and uh also you don't want to like go 11 11 i think that's a bit over the top at the moment in um f1 2018 f1 2017 11 11 was totally acceptable and that's like one of the best things you could do but you don't need that much anymore i feel i don't know maybe you could use that in the race and might give you a lot more stability and more consistency but for the time trial at least i think it should be similar for the race though in my opinion uh 79 was enough clearance for me to not like drag the car too much in a straight and uh, it was still giving me sufficient clearance uh, brakes I have run way lower brake pressure and put the rear brake bias way further to the back uh, gives me more confidence on the brakes having a lower brake pressure obviously and uh, putting all the brake pressure towards the back uh, just helps me so much with uh, not locking up the car at all uh, you might want to increase the brake bias or add it more towards the front if you're having a race that way it won't damage the rear tires as much because the rear tires matter a whole heap in the wet but uh, that's up to you and i'm not sure i haven't really tested it in a full-on race yet but i think that would be somewhat optimal if you just ran maybe 54 brake bias and i'll just lower brake pressure as usual i already explained i already explained that i would be running a lower uh, tire pressure obviously in the wet because it gives just so much more traction and there's no real other reason apart from that really um if the track starts drying out you're obviously going to have lower tire pressure which means you'll have less um chance of overheating the tires when it is time to switch over to like intermediates or dryers and uh, that'll help out a little bit there but that's not so much the reason why you'd have uh lower tire pressures i just want to talk a little bit about wet weather driving techniques so obviously as you're coming out of a corner, you want to try and start show it shifting. As you can see, the harder you put on the throttle, the harder it is to control the car.
whereas that's a much better exit if you short shift, obviously. Uh, it also helps save fuel, that's why you won't burn as much fuel in the wet. So if you really want to make the most of your race strategy, underfuel the car for the wet at the start of the race, and that way it's a lighter car, easier to control, and you will be burning less fuel anyway, so you can create lean um, fuel mix, and then you can get way better exits as well. Managing your ERS is also a big deal this year, so what you want to do is probably not run overtake mode anytime, uh, unless you are trying to throw everything at it and overtake a car down the straight. Uh, it chews up way too much battery, so keeping it in high at most when you're going down the straights is probably a good idea. Running none or lean through corners is your best bet as well. Another tip I can give when entering a tight corner is not shifting down as much as it can unsettle the car. So keeping it in a higher gear can give better traction and it won't unsettle the rear as much when you go to put on the power again. So one more thing I want to talk about that a lot of other YouTubers haven't talked about yet or haven't seen a video on it yet is the actual camera angle of the car. Uh, it can affect the balance of the car especially with uh, the way you uh, read the force feedback in the controller or the wheel. Uh, it can affect how you understand the car's behavior when it hits a curve when it's starting to break traction, all that sort of thing, and the braking. So that, these are my settings right now. Uh, they're not optimal. I believe that the best, the best settings would be closer to something like this. I'd say if I was fully going competitive, I'd run less field of view as well. So probably about there. And I run absolutely no camera shake and a little bit of camera movement though to give better feeling under braking so that way it's just more natural. So I believe that would be probably close to the optimal settings, maybe even less field of view. Uh, it just helps you pick your braking mark is even better as well and your control, um, your turn in uh, points to uh, corners and all that sort of stuff. Anyways, that's probably what I'd be running if I was trying to maximize everything but I'm you know more about the aesthetic and I'd like to see my helmet uh, that I've earned or whatever from the competition points and um yeah but it's totally up to your preference I that's what I'd suggest you do if you actually wanted an extra half a tenth around a track and wanted to be able to break better and pick corners better but otherwise it doesn't matter as much but it is there if you need that slight competitive advantage if you enjoyed the video leaving a like helps me a lot as well as subscribing and I'll see you all in a brand new one. Thanks so much for watching.